I think I'm already online live on YouTube here from the Swedish Chamber. We are still preparing, not have not started yet. Yes, here we go. Is it one minute left? We are Swedish and punctual, right, Pia? Yes, yeah, correct. Uh, even if you live in Rio, you are still punctual. Uh, that uh, goes with me from uh, when I was little. So you, ha you can't miss the game, so to speak. <laughs> exactly. So we are starting this game now, 10 o'clock. Good morning, everyone here in Brazil. Good afternoon, if you are in Sweden. Uh, time for a Friday Fika. As you know, those of you who have followed us, every Friday this hour, we invite a special guest to talk about this Swedish experience. So uh, while we do that, we have a Fika in the, in the Swedish mug. Uh, as I always say, we Swedes prefer the coffee in a, in a big thing like this, not the small shikara in the Brazilian way. We have this coffee, we think big. And uh, usually together with the Canel Bulle, uh, this I just received from O Escandinavo, the Scandinavian restaurant here in Sao Paulo in Pinheiros. Those of you who like Scandinavian food, I can really recommend our partner O Escandinavo, uh, which all, also serves lunch, dinner, and it's a fantastic mix of Norwegian, Finnish, Danish, and Swedish foods. Uh, so it's, they are a member of the chamber too. Very happy to have this partnership with them. Uh, and the Fika culture, uh, I also mentioned this before, it's a, a Swedish phenomenon that uh, people usually take a break from the, off, from, from, they leave their chair, go to the, the company's office and, and meet for a coffee and try to talk about other stuff, not work can be football, can be family, can be whatever. And it's really a creative moment, actually. So when you get back to your chair and your computer, sometimes you get some really creative ideas. So it's been proven that FIKA is something good for you, for your mental health also. So from the chamber here in Sao Paulo, we try to, to promote the FIKA culture also in Brazil. It's something I, I, I miss. I, li I like the bakery culture, padaria. Eh? Here we have in Sao Paulo, padaria in every corner. It's great, but it's not the same as a, as a Swedish coffee shop where you go for a coffee and, and sweet bread, etc. So let's see if we can uh, um, uh, inspire the Brazilians for more fika. And I'm very happy to welcome today's guest, Pia Sundhage, who is the head coach of the Brazilian national team, uh, football team. I will continue saying football. I told Pia that football for me, it's the original word. If you go to the United States, they say soccer, right? Uh, and not confused with American football. But I will insist on football. For me, that's the, the right word for this sport. Let's see if Pia prefers soccer. She lived in the States for many years. Let's see what she said. But she's uh, for the national football team, Brazilian national football team, the head coach. Very happy to have you here, Pia. Thank you for accepting the invitation. I know that um, you have a lot to do. So first of all, Pia, welcome again. And please tell, tell us about yourself. Who are you? Where did you where do you come from? Where were you born? A little bit about your background, please. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, talking to you and have a chance to talk about football. I also prefer the word football. Even in the US, I, I didn't say soccer. <laughs> I made a mistake all the time saying football. So, uh, and football has taken me to uh, many places. Uh, when I was a little girl, uh, I uh, was shy, but as long as I had my best friend around and that was the football, uh, then I made friends and I compete. I just love to compete. And back in the good old days, we talk about the 60s, 70s, uh, girls were not allowed to play football in Sweden. So uh, I had, I've had a great uh, grown-up uh, uh, situation where a great um, uh, village, uh, you have friends, 
uh, grown up people. And uh, so uh, what happened was in order to play with the boys, uh, I had to change my first name. My name is Pia, but uh, the coach changed that to Pelle. And I thought <laughs> that's very close to Pelle. So I called myself Pelle and uh, he called me Pelle and I was allowed to play with the boys team for two, three years. Uh, and then I moved and I uh, started to play in, in a women's team. I am 11 at the time. And uh, the oldest player was, she was a mother and she was 31 or something like that. But that was a blast for me. I had a real referee, I had uh, lines, uh, real goals and, and so on. And I just played and played. Uh, and when I was uh, 15 years old, I was called up in the national team. Uh, and uh, I played in the, for Sweden uh, around 20 years in the national team. And uh, I really was into this uh, football, so I wanted to be a coach. Thanks to uh, uh, great coaches I've had, uh, because they encouraged me to not only play, but also talk, be tactics, and so on. And mm. then I went on playing the first European Championship, 84. Sweden won against England, the first World Cup, 91. Uh, the bronze medal uh, and um, then the first Olympics 96 then I actually got injured and at the age of 36 I had to stop but I continued mm -hmm. to coach so now exactly. I've been coaching as yeah been coaching um, in China assistant coach coaching US coaching uh, Sweden coaching Brazil national teams and, and here I am uh, I'm around uh, Marta, try to bring out the best performance in this Brazilian national team. Yeah, perfect. That was a great summary of a, a long career. <laughs> we'll go back to some details here. Let's go back to the childhood, Pia. You said that there were no girls team in your city, right? Uh, it was a smaller town, maybe. And what, was that a fact for all over Sweden? I mean, it's not so long ago, 40 years ago. Uh, I think this is, it's, it can be encouraging for countries where you feel that oh, there's no room for girls. I mean, even in Sweden, it was the same situation. And today you have girls teams all over the country, right? So things have changed pretty pretty fast. Yeah, I, I've been the lucky one because I've been a part of this change because that uh, we didn't have women's football 1966. I was playing, I was six years old and I wanted to play mm -hmm. in a team. But uh, there, there were no such a thing like girls' football, uh, nowhere in Sweden. And I think they brought up uh, women's football in 1970. And at the time, I was 20, 10 years old. And when I was 11, I had a chance to play in the women's game. So it's uh, when they say football, and still when you say football, it's, um, if you look at um, when they announce certain things, they, unfortunately, they say football and then they say women's football. I think that's mm -hmm. a little bit unfair. They should have said mm -hmm. men's football and women's football. But it, it started mm -hmm. to change. Uh, and I've been fighting for that when I'm working for the Swedish Federation. And you can imagine in China and even in the U.S. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, step by step. And I think um, especially social media have made the difference, actually, because it's storytelling. Girls yeah. want yeah. to play football, hands down. Mm -hmm. And they have some good role models too, right? Female players now. Um, think about the United States. It has been, really been a boom in the United States. And you were there, right? Did you work with girls' teams? Uh, did you have time to, to, to work with, I mean, promoting uh, girls, uh, younger girls' football in, in, in the States? Uh, not really. Uh, I was uh, coaching the national team and uh, for five years. Uh, and previously, I was coaching the, the club team. But professional club team, but uh, I was inspired of how they exp express themselves. You can imagine when you put a microphone to Abby Womack, <laughs> she's so good, <laughs> but everybody's good, you know, and uh, you've seen what uh, uh, Carly Lloyd, uh, Megan Rapinoe, you, you can take any of those American players. I think they are great role models for, for, for the game, not only for the women's mm -hmm. game, for the game, the football, I mean. So um, uh, the way I, I remember, remember I was standing in an interview, just um, listen to Abby and I was picking up some words, you know, 
they start mm-hmm. to listen to English, but also the, the how she rephrased things. Yeah, that's uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, the Americans, we have to admire them for their communication skills, right? And they, they, they show what they True. can. We say that we Swedes have a young dialog and we, we are too shy. You know, we never talk about how good we are, I think. But the Americans can really do it. And that's why, for example, football has been booming, I think. It's all about media, about communication, right? Yeah, I'm doing a good job, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And Pia, you as a player, um, an athlete... Share with us some some special memories. Uh, if you think back when you played for Swedish clubs, etc., what, what special memory do you have? Uh, yeah. I you know I I remember. For me, it's very often the first time. So uh, so, for instance, uh, the Swedish Cup, the Swedish uh, to be. Uh, I was playing for GTEx. Uh, a club just outside uh, Gothenburg and winning the championship and how the media actually did a pretty good job, but they did it for one day and then they forgot about the women's game. But Mm -hmm. everything that was, when you scored a goal, that kind of feeling that uh, uh, we had uh, not big crowds, but the crowd that were there, they really wanted to see uh, a performance. They were excited. And Mm -hmm. it's about, if you want to improve something, I think, uh, on internet, well, uh, high l- level, it's a- about competing. And sometimes you lose, sometimes you win, sometimes you mm-hmm. have a, a pretty good game, sometimes you don't, but still you win because you have teammates. It's like it's like the society itself, you know, you, you help yeah. each other out and so on. And yeah. that kind of stories um, as a player with GTEx, uh, but also I was a player and a coach for Hammarby. So Hammarby is, uh, means a lot to me. Uh, all the players mm-hmm. I played with and coaching with. Um, Stockholm team. And I right? also remember, yeah, Stockholm team. But also I remember, I have so many memories, but um, when I came back from, from China, the World Cup 91, we, we got a bronze medal. And well, nobody greeted us, you know. It was like, okay, they won a bronze medal. But for me, deep down inside, that was a, a, a statement, so to speak. You know, we play mm-hmm. against the best team in the world. And you was one, Norway second, and we took the third place winning against Germany. So uh, there have been many great moments and penalty kicks. Uh, and it's probably no, we uh, were kicked out in Olympics the Brazilian national team but uh, Swedish national team won 1984 uh, I took the last penalty kick against England and then we became the European Championship so uh, there, there are so many moments so uh, of course. but it's of course. storytelling yeah <laughs> and how old were you when you won the, the Swedish Cup the GTX first time I was 19 the first time because I was staying in a small village in Lissahamn. Uh, then I really wanted to play more. And when I ended up in my school, Tingsholm Gymnasium, then the first thing I did, I, I took everything and I just went to Gothenburg because uh, I knew that they play well. I knew that they have a good coach. Here. So as I said, the ball has... Uh, taken me to so many great places and have given me so many friends by me just saying yes, uh, not yeah. really knowing what it ma- how, well what it means, but uh, well eventually it it's, it turns out to be a good thing. Yeah, lots of adventures. And now you're in Rio, Brazil. You were invited to, to coach the Brazilian team. So how is your life as a carioca? Are you enjoying the season? Have you, of course, the pandemic came, right? You had the pandemic. Uh, uh, so tell us, yeah. how was your daily life in Rio? Yeah, it's a little bit uh, pity with the pandemic. But um, still, um, it's, it's a, uh, I have a great life, no doubt about that. So this morning, for instance, I, I know how important it is. The older I get, I need to, uh, uh, to be fit because I'm standing on the pitch and I'm doing this and flying and this and that. So um, I start with doing some workouts, have breakfast, and then I take a couple of steps on the beach. And for me, that is uh, relaxing. You know, I can think about anything. Sometimes it's about football, but sometimes it's about 
yeah, friends or, or a decision I make or all of a sudden the music comes up. I don't know. But that is, it's like for my soul. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm taking a couple of steps and um, then I'm just about to go to, to work then after that. So, um, and every weekend I'm traveling. So it's, um, uh, I would say it's a great life. Uh, a lot, a lot of football. You just turn on the mm-hmm. TV. <laughs> but it's a football game yeah so exactly. it's like a paradise at times uh, uh, you said you travel every weekend is that because to, 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 to watch games or is it privately or yeah uh, very often in Sao Paulo because you have the best mm-hmm. teams in Sao Paulo and uh, so I think uh, this weekend I decided not to go uh, and I think that's one since I don't know when because um, uh, I will go on Wednesday instead. So y- y- I'm traveling and uh, yeah. in order to find the best players and, you know, see good games mm-hmm. and so on. Okay. That ah, well, sounds like a good start of the day. Walk on the beach. Many cariocas start the day like that. So uh, it's when in Rome, do as the Romans, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and what about Marta? She's, she has been elected the best player in the world for is it six times, I think. Uh, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. She's been an excellent role model for many Brazilian girls. Uh, tell us about your story. When did you meet her the first time and how is your relationship today? Uh, the first time I actually met her was in Sweden because she played for Umeå. Uh, I think she was uh, 17, 18, something like that. So I was coaching uh, Kiefer Bro. And uh, that was the first time I actually met her. Uh, and, and every time she played, uh, we had so uh, big crowds. I think it was uh, almost 3,000 watching that game. And uh, you can tell, first of all, she's a great player. No doubt about that. Secondly, everybody knows who she is. And also, she takes the time for all her fans. So, you know, following her, uh, being in Sweden and all these, cha- I coached against her uh, 2008 in the Olympic final. I was coaching US at the time and we played against Brazil and extra time and we won 1-0. One, one um, so when I came here, yeah, I knew that Marta, you know, been uh, elected six times and so good and so famous. But I have to say, it is, it's hard to, to explain because, um, yeah, I knew she was big, but I didn't know that she was that big. So uh, we played against Argentina twice and she has time. She, uh, is, uh, you know, selfies and you, you name it. And she, uh, a couple of words with, with the fans and of course, security guys, they surround her all the time. So she, uh, she's big, she's huge. She's a star. Uh, and she has been very important for um, the, the women's football, uh, not, in, not only in, in Brazil. And uh, I hope she's getting older. She's not that good any longer, but she's smart. So uh, probably she can help this team uh, one, two years more. So uh, that's, that's a plan I, we have to find a, a specific spot for her because she means a lot. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And like we were saying before, it's not only talent, but it's you need to be able to communicate and able to you have to handle the, the pressure and all the attention. So I think she's a she's a media phenomenon, right? Uh, and she is also very competitive. I think that's one of the reasons why why she's been so good so long. She um, mm-hmm. she likes to compete and uh, she is, you know, yeah. And that's the, the <laughs> hardest part, you know, when we, we kicked out in the quarterfinal, you know, there's so many feelings you have as a staff. We need to take mm-hmm. care of the players. You know, it was a horrible way to just end and go, you know, leave Japan. But um, mm-hmm. that's our job. And um, that's the hardest part. She has so much energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as you know, she plays the music as well. So she, I had one experience with her. Uh, we had a press conference in, in Olympics and it was me, my boss and her in the, in the big bus. 
and it was so much fun because she was playing all the time. She played all the songs, new songs, so some and this, and I said, "Thank you very much." Yeah. It, that trip took an hour or something like that, but you know, yeah, she goes yeah. on and on and on like that. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. I have to say that. Yeah, yeah. This thing with rhythm and music it also it's something that you like also, right, Pia? You play play some instruments. Some videos have gone viral. I saw the one <laughs> yeah. uh, to Ving, to Ving. It's been like 35,000 likes on YouTube just for that film. Uh, yeah. when you, uh, what is it you say that um, uh, pieces, uh, set, set the pieces? Tell us the story about pieces. the song. Well, you know, in order to, I have a staff and I want us to be cohesive. We talk about juntas. Uh, we talk about the players, and I think as a, I remember as a player, if I felt that the team, they're just behind us. Uh, and it's not only one person, the head coach, it's a whole team. Uh, so uh, that's one of my uh, tactics, so to speak. You, you, you need a team behind the team, of course. And that team, the staff, need to be tight. And one thing in order to, it's, uh, it's to laugh, uh, laugh and sing. So... Of course, we had a um, uh, staff meeting during the camp and I would say, okay, what kind of music do you like? I like rock and roll. I, and I started with Simon and Garfunkel and Bruce Springsteen and Bob Dylan. And they just, okay. Uh, but then they come up with this uh, song. To Vans, to Vans, age eyes, school to taste and eyes. And I was listening, okay? And they start to sing. They know every single word. So uh, then we started to sing that, that. And uh, then we made fun of one of the uh, staff members talk about set pieces because it was always talk about set pieces. So we just sang. So it's one way to, uh, to get uh, connected. Uh, it's also one way for me to pick up one or two words here and there. And, and, and it, uh, it's good for my soul. I relax. And if it's... Uh, uh, Brazilian music, or if it's uh, Paul Simon, yeah, it depends. But that's one way for me to enjoy life. And my first furniture in the US, my first furniture in Brazil was a guitar. Okay. Very important. Very important. <laughs> and do you play a lot? Do you play every day? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, you know, uh, here and there. Sometimes I have long days, but um, it's relaxing. Uh, it's I'm living a competitive life. Uh, mm. They expect Brazil to win. Uh, we should bring out the best players and so on. So, mm. and I really like uh, uh, to uh, you know try to bring out something under pressure. That's that's why I'm here actually. But in order to do that, I need the opposite. I need to be relaxed and uh, I can't compete in music. So that will be sometimes it sounds well, sometimes it sounds, sounds awful. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's like um, my way to recharge, so to speak. I turn off the competition, so to speak. And that is very mm -hmm. important for me. Yeah, yeah. I think you've come to the right place. Brazil is a music-loving people, Rio, especially with all the, the samba bars. And I agree with you that people they know the songs, right? If you go to a wedding, to a show or a football game, so, suddenly the people start singing. They know so many songs. You know, it's it's really emotional to, to hear uh, every single nice. word. Every uh, uh, it's true. Uh, uh. And what about Sweden, the Swedish experience? What do you miss from Sweden living in Brazil? I, of course, uh, I miss my family. I have uh, three sisters, two brothers. Uh, but I, it's easy to get connected with today. We have the internet and so on. Uh, but it's funny. I actually, um, I've been horseback riding lately. My sister tries to teach me how to horseback ride in the last five years. And I started, I, in the very beginning, I was scared of horses. Uh, mm. well, that's a long story. But um, so every time I go home, I make sure that I get a chance to stay with my sister. And that's pretty much, I miss a little bit. Uh, you miss the horses. I, I've, 
Yeah, I, I actually miss uh, horseback riding. But the thing is, it doesn't matter where I am. You know, I, I think I'm pretty good at uh, like where I am. I've said yes to many things, and then I just try to figure it out. Okay, so how could this be a, a great time in my life? Uh, I don't have any kids. I don't have a family. So in that aspect, I'm free, so to speak. So uh, I've been really good to enjoy life and put me down in any country. I think I will figure it out soon if there is a ball and if there is a guitar. I, I think I do. All the time. <laughs> Perfect. So I guess that also goes for the American culture that you, you, you live many years in the United States. Is there anything you feel that you miss from that kind of culture in terms of maybe not material stuff, but uh, I mean, American way of thinking or whatever. What do you think Brazil could do, have more? Yeah, I would say uh, the word uh, grit. The, I, I admire their way to uh, spread the word. And, uh, you know, uh, it's contagious. I've been around that team for five years and, uh, you know, coaching fantastic players. And they really bring out the best performance in each other. They, they compete because you have to remember there are many players before, before they reach this level. Of course, they've been knocked down somewhere. But those mm -hmm. who reach the international uh, level, they are strong, they are friendly, they are generous. And that makes the team so, so good. And, uh, you know, you just uh, be around people that want you to be successful. And when it doesn't work that well, there is a word like grit. And I read a little about that word. And I, I, I really like it because uh, where I am right now, uh, and as you can imagine, uh, something, sometimes it doesn't work, okay? You have to wait. Uh, instead of getting a little bit um, annoyed or uh, a bad feeling, I try to turn that to something. Okay, this is interesting. Because the, the victory should not come easy to you because everybody will win then. So it, it is a pleasure to, to coach under pressure. And hey, you know what? It's a trouble sometimes. It takes time. Mm -hmm. And I really find, try to find a way. So if I can manage to, to get that feeling, grit feeling, that is actually something I, I admire uh, the, the national team, U.S. national team for doing fantastic with that. I think grit is, is it gama in, in Portuguese, right? Gama or uh, mm -hmm. f f f uh, fierce passion. Fierce mm -hmm. passion. Yeah, I guess that's grit, right? Gama. And you said when you were here at the chamber in 2019, that was actually a great event, Pia. You accepted the invitation. But, uh, uh, the, your first game with the team was against Argentina here at the Pacaembu Stadium, near where I am right now. Uh, uh, you, you won 5-0. to zero, And the day after, you came to the chamber and gave a presentation. And one thing you said was exactly that, that uh, your ambition was, your, 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 your objective was to combine Swedish organization with the American grit for the Brazilian team. Is that something that feel, that, feel that, uh, that you feel you're in the right direction? And also combining this, my question is, with the Brazilian way of improvisation. Um, Swedes, Americans, and Brazilians, how does this thinking work? Uh, how is your process with the team? Uh, it, it's so interesting. I, I said I've uh, come across a couple of challenging things. Uh, in my life, I would think this is the biggest challenge ever, and it's really interesting and it's fun. Uh, because um, uh, after the quarterfinal, for instance, because we, we want to win, we're gonna, uh, we want to win, we'll be the best team in the world, and it's a, a long way to go, and you need to do certain things. And when it comes to the game and organization, I think during the Olympics, we did we did great when it comes. To organization especially in the defense i think uh, organization is the balance between the create to be creative and to uh, play surprise me the brazilian plays doing crazy things i think there's a balance <laughs> i think uh, we need to do i i need to allow them to do more things um in the attack when it comes to grit i think uh, there is a little bit of a culture uh, because uh, in the quarterfinal, we could actually brought up something a little bit different. 
they uh, we play and we try to find a way but that uh, there's a room for improvement and um, talking to my uh, sports psychologist we we are talking so what is the next step we need uh, tools more um, uh, hands down this is what we need to do uh, and we started and uh, I, I think it's so interesting because organization yeah no problem now it's about the grit and it goes along a little bit with, with the culture. So um, to answer your question, uh, we take a couple of steps and we need to take some more. And it's very, very interesting. Uh, many, it's not only about one person either, right? Uh, I mean, if you do no. the algorithm, <laughs> 11 players, three different cultures. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of things to, to match. Uh, it's true. And, and dynamic, as you know, all the groups that different kinds of dynamic. And we brought in some new players now and that changed the, the dynamics a little bit. And now we have a chance to push a little bit more to, to actually improve that little thing grit. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, and also I have brought uh, my assistant coach, the Swedish assistant coach. She brought a family here. So now she's closer to to me and I think that is another thing that will make it a little bit uh, better and um, yeah, you just have to find it out and work hard. Yeah, yeah, of course, great. You mentioned the quarterfinal, it was against Canada, right? Correct. And you took it to the, uh, to the penalties. I mean, you, the girls played really well, uh, lost unfortunately the penalties and then they, Canada won the final uh, against Sweden, right? Also on penalties. Correct, correct. I mean, you, you, lost against the, the, you lost against the champions. So, I mean, of course, yeah. we would have liked to take, take the girls uh, further, but, I mean, they played really well during the Olympics, no doubt. Uh, uh, I'm thinking about Sweden now again, P. I mean, Swedish, uh, uh, both teams, girls and men, men and women, have many, many trophies and playing well. If you compare to our neighbors, Finland, Norway, and Denmark. Denmark, okay, they also have some, some nice football history. But why do you think that Sweden has been so successful in creating good teams and always, not always, but going to so many Olympic Games, so many uh, World Cups? What's the difference? What has Sweden done right? Well, don't forget Norway. The women's football Norway, they're doing, yeah, they've done very true. well, you know. Uh, 91. But not the men. Not the men. They don't not have as the many men. titles. No, that's no. right. <laughs> yeah, not, not as much. Well, I, I think when it comes, uh, if you talk about specifically the women's football, I think um, mm. we started early, uh, very early. And it's about a little bit the, the women's situation, the society, uh, I think. Uh, and then when you have this ground to, to stand on, then you take the next step. And um, we've been lucky with uh, education, some good coaches and uh, organization with the, the league, for instance. So, um, and, and nowadays, if you look at the women's football, the league in Sweden, at, at once, I would say uh, around uh, 95 or something like that, we said that this is the best league in the world. Probably we, we were right. Today is not. Mm -hmm. You have so many leagues in Europe and, and uh, doing uh, better than the Swedish league. So, but now the players from Sweden, they play abroad. So it is about, I think it's about education, a little bit about the women's situation in the society, actually. Uh, and then, of course, you have role models. So Gunilla Paiko, she was coaching 91. She was my coach uh, in the World Cup and got that bronze medal. Uh, and that's a female coach. And after that, you have many men and women coaching uh, in a pretty good way. Mm -hmm. I always also talk about uh, Sweden, the access we have as kids to, 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 Correct. to football fields, to clubs, right? It's, if you compare to Brazil, there's so many lost talents here because it's hard to, I mean... It's yeah, I mean it's, it costs money to go to a club, uh, uh, and in Sweden, when I was a kid, I played many sports for free, right? Ice hockey, tennis. So of course, that's how we find the talents. Um, 
it's, it's exactly. great growing up in Sweden. And here in Brazil, yeah. unfortunately, there are so many good kids out there that nobody discovers, right? Uh, you're absolutely right about that because you need the, the playing ground regardless which yeah. sport you but uh, if you look at sports in general with the groups uh, that is the society so if we lose that we will lose a very important part uh, family or society and uh, you're right i've seen uh, you know even here they pick up games in brazil and they don't they don't have anywhere to go uh, yeah. and if we can find those places because we don't have many places as they told me at least we don't have many players here in country. And I think with 220 million people, of course, they're no. players. But uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so it, it's, uh, it's a little bit tricky to find the players and give them a playing ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that goes for everything. Also, uh, artists. Sometimes I watch kids on the street playing music or singing. I mean, mm -hmm. they could go to any, they could be so famous, uh, fantastic voices and talents. But again, it's, 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 a, it's a hard life for many here. So uh, we mm -hmm. have to lift up those talents, not only in football, right? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Pia, what else? Um, we have another. 10 minutes, share some memories again from you as a coach. You mentioned a few ones here in the beginning in the introduction, but if you think back now, you're coaching Sweden, uh, China, United States, and now Brazil, what, which was your real highlight as a coach? Well, I have, <laughs> it's funny, I have a game actually. It's uh, in the World Cup 2011. Uh, and we play uh, against Brazil. U.S. plays against Brazil in the quarterfinal. Yeah. And remember, U.S. has always been playing or get, got a medal since it all started in 91. And here we are, 2011. Uh, and um, there is a situation where Marta get down in the box and um, uh, our uh, centre-back, um, Bueller, she sent off. Uh, I thought actually it was the other way around because I, I looked at it that situation very differently. That Marta, I thought she was cheating, but I was wrong. So, anyways, we won player down, and uh, they got a penalty kick, and, and many things happened. And um, uh, it's a tie, so it's extra time in a quarterfinal. And you can imagine, you know. I would do something that um, with this team that they not done before, and that means losing in the quarterfinal, and that's not good. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, Marta scores a fantastic goal, two one. We are two one down, and um, and of course Brazilians they were laying on the ground, they were cheating, and it was just horrible. I think they just destroyed the game, and of course they wanted to. Uh, hear the, the final whistle. So anyways, it ended up with Christiane going down the line and uh, uh, Christy Rampone gets the ball. She plays it to Carly Lloyd. Carly Lloyd plays it out to the left to Megan Rampino. And we have been working on this. Megan Rampino, please don't play to the first post all the time because I'll be warm back, won't sit uh, on mm -hmm. the far post or maybe central. So while she's heads up, I, I was looking at Abby. Where is Abby? Where is Abby? The ball is flying in the box. And she competes against a center back, who I now work with, and a goalkeeper. And she won that battle and 2-2. And they won on penalty kicks. So that moment, yeah. it's like an uh, American movie. Well, it's a little bit boring because it's a happy ending. <laughs> but, the, but this is... This is real. This is actually real. And I still, when I, uh, when I talk about it, it, it gets so excited because the, it is it tactics, a lot of training, and it's grit and believing yeah. that they can win. They can't, you know, yeah. we can't lose. No. So that it kind of feelings are contagious. I think that is my moment. But I also have to mention when I went to coaching Sweden in, in European Championship. Uh, where uh, we hosted 2013. That was so much more than football. Uh, it, it was uh, everything. We had um, 
Lotta Schelin and Kosa Aslani, they scored goals, they played well. And uh, every single answer, every single autograph or selfie, so much for the women's game. It, it's, um, I get warm when I talk about it because we did such a good job uh, for the women's game in general, 2013, I think, together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so much more than football, right? Uh, yeah, the goal. Yeah, I tell you, uh, I say that every time when I when I have a presentation, and I really try to emphasize that. And I think I'm self is living that kind of, of dream. Football is so much more than a gold medal. It is the mm. journey, and and mm. it has been. Uh, look at the women's situation. Well, since I was a little girl, I, I was not allowed to play football, and today you can be professional. And you have yeah. the World Cup and so on. And it yeah. goes along with, as I said, the society. Uh, the, it's, it has changed to the better, I think. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of thanks to you, Pia. I mean, you've take, taken part of this journey. And I mean, it's, your, your story has inspired so many girls. So congratulations to, for your story. And this really has, has helped to, to, to improve the, the women's football. So I'm really happy about that. Um, uh, I was having, I had another question here now before I forget. Ah, yes, the coming years. I mean, what's your plans now? Uh, what, are, what are your goals? What is, how long is your contract with the, with the Federation, Brazilian Federation? Uh, uh, next year is Copa America. So, mm-hmm. and that's how you qualify for the World Cup and the Olympics. And uh, uh, right now, uh, we don't know where it is. We don't. We know know when it is, but we don't know where. We are in, uh, in Brazil, uh, and then after that, I hope we will qualify, and then the World Cup in Australia, uh, twenty three, and after that, uh, the Olympics in France. Then I'm older than I am today, and then I probably go back home and relax a little bit and play some Bob Dylan songs. I <laughs> see. So 2023, there's a World Cup in, in Australia, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. That's when we're going to take the next gold medal then. Yeah, that's what it, uh, we're working for that. And uh, I enjoy every single day. The journey is fantastic. Uh, uh, I imagine. Okay, Pia, that was a nice fika with you. Any last comments from you before we let people go back to their offices, uh, take weekend? Well, uh, enjoy the moment and be generous to people. Uh, and be patient. Yeah, yes, correct. <laughs> you said that paciencia was one of the first words you learned in Portuguese, right? Uh, that's that's correct, and uh, that has taken me uh, quite a bit. Uh, so it is important. It yeah. you, when talk about change because I am some sort of a change coming in here with Swedish coach in Brazil. It's over time you make the change, and that is counts for everything. So you need to be patient and consistent. So that's mm-hmm. what I'm trying to do. Yeah, and then you get you, then. Great chance of being successful. The same message to companies. You come to Brazil, you have to be patient. <laughs> you have to have stamina. But then if you make yeah. it, you can make it big time, you know. So it's, it's worth the journey. It, it's worth, it's worth the, 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 the challenges. Uh, oh. But it's not easy. It's not, Brazil is not for beginners, right? And you were definitely <laughs> not a beginner when you came here. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. Uh, <laughs> Okay, Pia, thank you for the FICA. Let's keep in touch. Hope to see you in Sao Paulo again soon. Uh, hope to take to, re, to have events again, right? We've been here now for one year and a half without physical events, but hopefully we'll be back soon. And then we hope to have you as a guest speaker again. I would be loved to be there. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Wish you a good weekend in Rio and um, good luck with the team. Thanks for the chat. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao. Bye.